Bros. This is the All Bros Podcast. I am Jonathan. And I am Caleb. And we are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot, a bit of the nerd life. Uh, this week on the podcast, we'll be talking about some up and coming uh, pops. I almost said Blu rays. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't got none, though. Yeah, no, we do not. Um, there is a, a Disney Park exclusive coming out soon. Um, so we'll be talking about that. Um, and then through the wall, we got some um, Disney and Deadpool news. Um, so that's going to be fun to talk about. And then with this week's sneak peeks, we got a crap ton. Uh, we got a cap- the Captain Marvel Super Bowl TV spot, the Avengers Endgame Super Bowl TV spot, the Toy Story 4 Super Bowl TV spot, and I don't think Child's Play premiered during the Super Bowl. It didn't? No. I thought it did. That's what the... Uh... YouTube told me. Really? Yeah. Oh. Let's see. It said... Uh... Oh. I guess it didn't. Never huh. mind. Caught you in a lie. Yep. You shot me. You should be ashamed, you should be ashamed of yourself. I am ashamed. Okay. I'll go whip myself later. Okay, please don't say that again. That just made it weird. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that fair, was fair just enough. that was just weird. <laughs> that felt like really uncomfortable coming out of my mouth too. I was just like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> "Is this kind of like words just spilling out?" <laughs> Glad you felt uncomfortable saying it because yeah, my... I sure did. Uh, and then our main event of the evening will be our All Bros breakdown of the Oscar nominated "The Ballad of Buster Scruggs." Hell yeah. Yeah. It's a damn good movie. It is. It really, really was good. So I know we're both excited to break it down. Um, So let's get into this episode. All right. So as far as pops go, uh, we have Rainbow Unicorn, which is the um, unicorn that is like huge in uh, Riley's dreams from Inside Out. Um, literally, they've—I don't know how many like Rainbow Unicorn movies that her imagination has come up with, but it's pretty high. Um, <laughs> and so this will be a Disney Parks exclusive. I don't know, like, because I know they never release it just to one certain section or one certain store in the park. It's like usually split all around. Because I think that's how, that's how it was with the the redhead and uh, the new Alice um, in her teacup um, pop ride that they recently came out with. Do you see how much that one was? No. It was 50. 50? Yeah. Are you shitting me? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even that cool. It wasn't. But So this one, I think Disney Park like exclusives, because they usually do come on the Disney Store website. So I can't remember. I think they're like 20. Ooh. Yeah. Dude, that's rough. Yeah, I don't really think I... I don't really need this one. That's not worth it at all. No, the only one that I would have wanted and I missed out on was the redhead from... Uh, sorry, is it the redhead or the redded? From... Pirates of the, Car- the Pirates of the Caribbean ride? Ooh. Don't. I uh, want to say they say we want the redhead. I'm pretty sure it's the redhead. Okay, all right, just making sure. That's like the only pop that, for, that's been released in Disney stores I want. <gasps> Wait, I lied. The figment one. From, figment. Yeah, from Journey into Your Imagination. Oh. Uh, yeah, that one would be so cool to have. I want that one. That'd be way cool. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, I hope they like I, like that's cool that they're releasing these, but I want them to do more like Disney Park exclusives that are actually like Disneyland attraction characters. Like get, like they did like the Splash uh, Mountain ride. Yeah. Those two characters. I want more of those characters. Like Mr. Toads? Yeah. Dude, that yeah. one would be so cool. You know what I would love, and I know it would never happen, is I want a throwback to America Sings, and I want a whole line of all those characters. All you mean the one where people died? Well, a, a lady, or a girl, died. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, a good... Okay. Do you know the whole story <laughs> behind that? <laughs> What? Coming into Funko Shop soon. <laughs> D- Disney moments. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Dude, 
that's just where my mind went. I forget. <laughs> I can't control. My where mind it goes. didn't even go there Dude, for a split second. Hilarious. How that'd be that... terrible, but. So funny. Dude, do you know how she died, right? <laughs> didn't she get crushed? Yeah, yeah. her head got crushed. <laughs> You're awful. I think there's. How long ago was that? Uh, that was back in the seventies. Back in the seventies, I think enough times passed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're Dude, awful. Dude, it's terrible, but it's freaking funny. Yeah. Maybe like when like Funko goes like Spencer's Gifts kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> but n- no. I, yeah, sorry. But uh, did you ever Fine, like. just shit on my idea, why don't you? <laughs> sorry, man. Did you ever like, um, have you ever gone on YouTube and actually like seen the full ride? Like, I have uh, not. It's a- I hate that I missed out on it because it's actually a really cool ride. And, like, the way that, you know, like, the carousel, like, um, well, uh, like, how the, you know, stage moves and so the audience moves with it was really cool. And it's still the same way now because with the carousel progress. And I don't think, like, sometimes people take it that seriously that literally because of what happened with America Sings, like, Disney cast members, if not, if one person stands up, they have to stop the whole attraction until that person sits down. Damn. So there's a video. I had to be that guy. Yeah, I know. No, there is a video of uh, because uh, um, the carousel progress had stopped because someone stood up and people kept walking out because it wouldn't continue. And you hear the Disney like um, employee shouting. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, please sit down. If you do not sit down, the ride cannot continue motion. Please sit down. He's just like freaking out. And I can totally understand why he's freaking out because like. It's not his fault. This is his job. Like, this is the precaution that he has to take. Mm-hmm. And these guests are really not, like, <laughs> seeing, like, how like how bad this could be if, like, something like that were to happen again. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. Yeah. They should show that, like, as a, like, the safety video before. So everyone's just like, yeah, I'm going to sit down now. <laughs> uh... I think so like what a, happened to the people that walked out? Did they have to come back and sit down, or no? They just walked out. Like, well, because like when you walk, so um, when it comes to where the car- uh the carousel pro or yeah, basically where the carousel progress is, uh, when you walk in, it's just like a whole room of like seats, and then the doors are just to the back, so it's very easy to just walk out. So yeah, no, they, but like many, like some people were saying in like the comments, like, oh, you know, like people that do that, like seriously need to just get like kicked out of the park or banned because like they're doing, like these cast members aren't trying to piss you off. They're doing this for your own safety. Mm -hmm. So dude, the the Disney workers go through a lot of shit. They really do. Like I applaud them so much. Yeah. Like I've seen some of the, the whispers pictures. Yeah, that they're like where they're able to write an anonymous confession. Yeah, about like just random shit, and one of them was about like all the Disney park ones, and the shit that they those people go through to make our experiences as tourists yeah. magical is insane. Like I have family members that work there, and they're they're just like um, manual laborers there, like janitors electricians and whatnot yeah but even they have to follow like a super strict set of rules to like when they interact with people or when they go around and whatnot it's insane so like i applaud those people oh yeah like tenfold i completely agree yeah i think the ride i think the ride was shut down for a day after that uh happened and they um installed breakaway walls um and then they put um um lights like literally all around the stage for when it's dark to where um whoever was um doing um uh, operating the ride would be able to not have the same predicament happen again um good call disney yeah i know right but then it closed like eight years later <laughs> <sighs> Did it, uh what did it get replaced with? Um so I think it just went back to the carousel of progress because that's the reason why it became America Sings was because General Motors thought that um everyone who had seen uh 
the Carousel of Progress literally didn't want to go see it again, so they moved it to somewhere else. I think they moved it to, I think it was in Disneyland, and then they moved it to Disney World. Mm. Um, so they needed, they didn't just want to leave the um, the theater empty, so um, they came up with an entirely new show called America Sings. So yeah. cool, yeah. Um, and then so let's move on to th- the the. the. <laughs> To our hour through the wall news, which Disney CEO Bob Iger is not his name mm-hmm. um, has confirmed that um, Deadpool will still be rated R going forward. <sighs> Hallelujah! Yeah, no kidding, yeah. dude. I hope. I mean, I'm sure that it's going to be this way, but Ryan Reynolds needs to continue being Deadpool. If he leaves, I don't think I really uh, don't. I don't want to see anybody else play Deadpool. Uh, I still want to see Deadpool though. He's like yeah. super funny. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. Like, I know we've only seen him a couple times, but Ryan Reynolds is starting to become like the kind of like RDJ and Chris Evans kind of person that I don't necessarily see anybody else playing this role. I don't either, but it's probably just because no one I've listened to has. Maybe, uh, I mean, if he kept the mask on, Donald Glover could do it. That'd be interesting. I mean, he need, he would need to bulken up a little bit. Yeah. But. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Just keep the mask on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So this just, so he confirmed that there's, it's not going to be just Deadpool. That they may explore R-rated Marvel movies somewhere else down the line. Like I I think the Black Widow movies rumored to be rated R. Yeah, it's the first MCU movie to be rumored to be rated R. I mean, that would be fantastic. Oh yeah, can we make it a Budapest movie though? Like I hope it's just like a like a soft R, where it's not like just cussing all the time. Yeah, but it's. Like, just maybe just gory or violence, which is the, what pushes it to be. Awful. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with you on that one. Like, that's that's the only thing I can see uh, Widow doing. I agree. I don't I don't want to see like hear the F bomb. Yeah, I don't either. In Black yeah. Widow. Yeah, just, I don't it see. Just, it, just, eh. it doesn't fit. No. Yeah. It fits with Deadpool. Oh, yeah, of course. Hands down. Doesn't fit with anyone else. No. Uh-uh. I mean, except maybe Logan. Yeah, it's But better. since Wolverine, or since Hugh Jack, oh my gosh, I called him Wolverine. But since Hugh Jackman's gone, I see them kind of lightning, not lightning, just not putting such a harsh tone on Wolverine from now on. Yeah. Which I think would be amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I completely agree. I legit just had a brain fart. What? Uh, what was I going to say? Maybe you were going to say that you need to speak up a little louder? Yeah, that's probably it. Is that better? Yeah, you keep getting like super quiet, dude. I'm sorry. It's habit. I know. I got to yeah, work on Victor's it. Victor's calling you out on your shit, dude. Okay. Knock it off. Okay, I'll stop. For those of you that don't know, Victor is one of our buddies at in the uh, Tailgate Talks uh, podcast. So go give them a check out there on Spotify and Anchor. And I'm not sure where else, but I'm sure Victor will tell you when you go listen to Tailgate Talks. Yeah. Dude, anyway, I seriously so can't what remember. Was your brain fart? I don't know. Like, it's not coming back to me now. It wasn't. Just think, R-rated Marvel movies, uh, F-bombs don't work with Black Widow, F-bombs work with Deadpool, Wolverine, trying to find a new Wolverine. Oh, okay, now I remember. Um, so, in the comics, has Rocket ever said the F-word? Uh, I don't know. I've not read a lot of Guardians. Because I'd be interested to see Rocket say the F-word. Really? I don't know. Be a weird one. Maybe, maybe once, just once. Like, but it like slips out on accident. He doesn't mean to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that fits for for Rocket. 
Like I've yeah, I've made okay. my main reading focus has been on Hulk, Spider Man. You don't say Deadpool. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, I've actually been reading a lot of Ant Man, and I've been also wait, but which Ant Man? Scott Lang or Scott Lang? Okay. And I've been wanting to get into reading some Moon Knight. Oh, because that short film that you watched did that kind of like get you like? No, I was already kind of like. I was already kind of into Moon Knight before. Okay. But I watched the fan film um, with some high expectations. Didn't really meet them. And it was mainly the suit's fault. Gotcha. Okay. But I think if they were to have fixed the suit to be a little more Moon Knight-y, it would have been pretty good. It would have been, like, damn good. Okay. All right. But, yeah, I've been wanting to get into uh, Moon Knight a little bit just because... I like the concept of the of him. Like I think like I've told you Split meets Batman. I don't think you've ever said that. I'm pretty sure I've told you that like yeah. once or twice. Oh. Okay, it must've been like years. Well, Split didn't come out years ago. When did when did, when did it? I don't know. Out? Split came out in like 2015, I think. Oh. Somewhere around there. Alrighty then. But yeah, I've been I've been wanting to get into a little bit more Moon Knight. Very nice, very nice. Um all right, do you have any other matters to say about this topic? Negative kind, sir. Alright. Then shall we move on to this week's sneak peeks? Let's do it. Alright. All right, so first on this week's sneak peeks, we have the Captain Marvel Super Bowl TV spot. What are your thoughts? I'm going to do this the whole episode. You better freaking <laughs> not. Because <laughs> you're not the one that has to edit and listen to all of this over again. <laughs> but now, what was up with the big-ass pause? We don't have music for this week's sneak peeks. Oh, yeah, we don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just suck, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got... We have our, we have the intro, we have the post intro, and we got the main event. We don't got one for this week's sneak peeks. Got it. Okay, I'll do better next time. I promise. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> Captain Marvel. Um, I loved the saying. Was wasn't it stronger? F- uh, is like faster, high, or further? Fa- oh shit! Isn't it higher, stronger, faster? I think it might have been that. Okay. And I love how that was like said throughout the whole thing. It was like chanted. I'm like, get freaking pumped over here. Yeah. Um, Brie Larson sold me on oh, Captain Marvel. Absolutely. And she sold on, She sold me since the the first trailer. Probably the second one for you. Yeah, it was the second one for me. I'm so excited to see oh, her. Me too. She is amazing. And she's really cute. She is really cute, dude. Yeah. Like... That's not why I, I'm wanting to Well, no, her, I'm though. not either. <laughs> but I'm just saying, she does give ScarJo a run for her money. Oh, yeah, for sure, dude. And her costume isn't, like, half as revealing as yeah. ScarJo's. Um, but, I mean, yeah, is that I like really... that saying being chanted throughout the whole thing. Yeah, that was awesome. I liked... The, I, I'm interested in seeing how much of the Air Force stuff that they throw in here. Because I want to, like, because if they throw a lot in, I'm going to kind of tear it apart. <laughs> if it's oh, not really? accurate, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be interesting if they do, because, yeah, that's going to make for a very interesting breakdown for us. Yeah. Have they at all, like, announced, like, what, like, the mm, supposed running time could be? Uh, Not that I know of. Okay. But I expect it being about two hours and some change. Okay. Yeah. Probably close to two and a half hours. That's what I'd say. It's usually what Marvel solo films are. Yeah, a pretty good, decent time. Yeah, it's never under two hours. Like I can't remember a Marvel movie that was under two hours. Wasn't Dark World? Might have. Let me check. Ooh. Um, but yeah, we we didn't get a whole ton of new footage from this one. No, it's really just like montage of like previous stuff we've seen. Yeah, more but, fighting sequences with yeah. Yon Rog. 
I think you got to see some more footage of the mask, didn't you? Yeah. Um, Which looked great. There was some footage of her flying through the air and punching a plane out of the sky. That was pretty badass. That was badass. Like oh, that, shit, that you're final right. final shot? How, how long was that? Or An it... hour and 52 minutes. Ooh, hell yeah. Nice, dude. Very nice. <laughs> Pull that one out of the top. I, fe- I think I remembered that because it felt a lot longer. It, it legit was. did. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. That must have been like two and a half hours. Wait, really? I think like we went and saw like the seven o'clock showing. Yeah, and we and came like, out and it was still there was still light out, and we're like, what? Well, no, like I think we came out and it was like barely like a little past nine, and we're like, shouldn't it be close to ten? <laughs> or when we went into Infinity War at like, what time did we go to see that? Like eight, I think so. And then we came out and it was damn near midnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to do whatever it takes. I don't care like what you have to do at work, but we have to see Endgame on Thursday night. Oh, for I, sure, dude. I can't wait till Friday night. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. I, like, I don't want to wait. Okay. Whew, glad we're on the same page. Hell yeah. Dude, okay. I'll, I'll do whatever I have to for I can get the money for those tickets. Okay. Since I'm going to be trying to move by April. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah, you have fun with that. I'm just saying, if you get really tired, it might be time to have your first energy drink to get you through the day. I actually got a system to wake me up. What's that? Apples and water. I should that take from than, your book. <laughs> that shit's better than coffee, dude. Yeah, I should really take from your book. Although, I've probably knocked at least... Five years off my life for how many iron drinks I put into my body. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring like a shot collar <laughs> or something <laughs> to just that like, just zap myself awake. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to be friggin' just wired the entire day. Yeah. When if end game comes out. Oh yeah. Like there's no way I'm not going to. Um. But speaking of end game, we got uh the Super Bowl trailer for that. Yeah. And we. <laughs> So, funny story. We I saw a picture on Facebook that said um that the some dude was not going to watch any trailers or any extra footage, just what the first trailer showed us. And he says just imagine what it'd be like to go in and not have any expectations, no nothing, not going going in knowing absolutely nothing. I sent it to Rose. And I sent it to Victor. You said, like, that's a good challenge. I'm going to try and do that. And I'm like, I'm going to try it too. Like, I'm going to try real hard. Uh, Victor said, like, he's not strong enough to do that. <laughs> and he's like, so I'll let you know how it is. And I'm like, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. The Super Bowl trailer came out. We watched it. Yeah. And I watched it like five times yeah. after. And Victor messaged me after the after we watched it. Or after it showed up, he's like, did you see it? I'm tempted to tag you in it. And I'm like, we're not doing very good with this challenge. We <laughs> no are, I've already seen it like five times. Yeah. The good news is it barely gives anything. It gives nothing away. Yeah. The bad news is, yeah, we really suck at challenges. Yep. But it didn't make my expectations any. Like, it didn't make me expect anything out of this no. movie. Even, like. My relationship with these, I am grain of salting everything I see. Hard. Same. Yeah. I'm just oh. like, I don't believe this is true. I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that's happening. Oh. <laughs> uh. Um, we did get some cool stuff. We got just uh, haunting images of New York. Yeah. Just you see like a whole bunch of um boats just like huddled next to. Or like by uh, where Lady Lady Liberty is. Yep. It was... Then uh, some. It looked like a baseball stadium, City yep. Bank Stadium, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought this was like a City Bank commercial when it first showed up. I was just like, ah, oh, dumb. I thought this was Avengers, and then it showed the rest. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um. We got to see a picture of. What was the what was the poster? What did the poster said? Now that they're gone, what do we do? What do I we think, do I or something like that? Said. Yeah. Or what do we do now that we're that that they're gone? Yeah, something like that. Um. 
and from the the commercial it looked like it was a like a a meeting like a support meeting and it looked like captain america was in in the meeting yeah which was just it's in that's crazy yeah i mean it's completely understandable dude I mean, it's insane to to imagine my like captain america needing to go to a support group yeah it's just crazy to think also like what if half of humanity just disappeared like just what would this world be like and everyone in the freaking world would get survivor's guilt yes yeah oh absolutely absolutely um so that's like in my like top five things I'm looking forward to most with Endgame is just how the Russo brothers are able to show how badly this affects not only the Avengers, but basically but the everyone. World. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, that'd be crazy, yeah. dude. Um. Yeah. I. Oh, we also got to see some Iron Man and Nebula working together. Yep, that was, which was awesome. Awesome. Um, we got Rocket walking in a door. Yeah. Uh, saw Clint back in action. Yep. And uh, he actually had his uh, bow and his uh, quiver, so it looks like he doesn't keep the sword for the whole movie. So I'm glad about that. Yep. Um, we got to see Thor. And it looked like a, a Wakandan looking door. Yeah, it did. Uh, he was holding Stormbreaker, right? Yep. Okay. And then you get to see him uh, a little later, not holding Stormbreaker, just kind of a close up on his face. Yeah. Well, no, it does not come before. What comes after the with him with Stormbreaker? I think it's Clint. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. I'm dumb. There you go. Um. Yeah, but the final shot is with Captain America tightening his shield. Yep, which and is, then oh my gosh, and then I so love cool. the group shot of them all just walking, and he's saying, "Some give up, but not us." Um, yeah, most people move on. Yeah, oh yeah, that's us. what it is. Yeah. Sorry. Um, one of the biggest things that I think we're being fooled is who's in that shot. With Captain America? Yeah, like that one where they're all walking at the end? Is that what you... Oh, no, no, no. I... Oh, okay. So, this is with the Endgame trailer. Okay. Um, You know how we see him in his... Back in the, the Winter Soldier outfit? Oh, yeah. I think we're being fooled. I don't think he's actually wearing that. I think he's wearing the normal, his normal Captain America garb with the scales that we saw. Yeah, I I, I can see that. I could definitely see that because Marvel loves trolling us. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> like everything I, I watch, down. I'm like, what are we really looking at? <laughs> um, We get an amazing shot with Ant-Man and War Machine. Yes, Holy that was shit. awesome. Dude, so cool. Hell yeah. Oh. This this got me more hype. Oh yeah, me too. Everything that we get just builds my hype. Yep. Um so much I don't know if I want to see a final trailer <laughs> or a trailer number 2. We both know we're going to. Yeah, I know. And... If I'd be surprised if we didn't get one in Captain Marvel. Yeah. When that one gets released, I'm 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 positive we're going to get a another trailer. The question is, do we cover our eyes when we go see? It? You can. I'm not going to. Dude, I'm weak. I know I am. I'm so am weak-willed. I am too. Oh. Like when they would release like clips for Infinity War, I'm like, nope, I've seen the trailers. I don't need to see clips. I'm good. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Like two minutes later, I'm like, you know what? They're probably not giving anything away. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I did this that same thing. I'd see the clips and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. And then I'd, I'd watch it and I'd be like, this is so cool. Um. Another TV spot that we got is one that I think you're 
excited for. Yes, I am too. Just to see what they, how they, where they take this. Yeah, um, and that is the child's play, kind of like it's a teaser leading into the first trailer because the trailer is supposed to drop this uh, Thursday night with uh, the Prodigy movie. Um, so I don't know when they are actually going to release it online. Um, because you don't really see that a lot when they release a, mo- uh, a trailer only with a movie. So it might be a couple days or they might actually release it Friday or Saturday. Right. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to go see the prodigy just to see the child's play trailer. I can wait, um, for it. Uh, but in the this prodigy looks really good though. It does, but I'd like catch on like a five buck Tuesday. Okay. I, I wouldn't pay like 10 bucks on it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, but in this trailer, uh, the CEO of, um, I don't even know the company. Do you remember it? I do not. Okay. So the company behind Bud He, or Buddy, not Bud He, sorry, uh, Buddy, um, he is talking about how uh, at their company they try to m- literally push the, um, what's the word? The the barricades, whatever, of a technology, make sure everything is just as advanced as it can be. Um, and then he, you know, leads into uh, this new toy that will, uh, you know, help your child out with anything, you know. And, like, he leads into, like, you know, like, he's he's more than a toy. He's your best friend. And then... till he Fs you up. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, and then I think... Is there really anything else he touches upon? It's kind of, like, really just, like... He just really gets into, like, how advanced this toy is. Yeah. I'm interested to see where this I goes. Too. I think this is a really good build-up to a trailer. Because, yeah, I'm really excited to see. Because um, we've only seen an image. I'm very interested to see Chucky in full footage. Um, I'm still hesitant that Brad Dorf is not doing the voice of Chucky. I don't like that. Do you think but... that they're going a toy like a serial killer possession route like the original or do you think they're no going they're going just like a malfunction they're going a malfunction way i don't know how i feel about that i i think it works um i don't know usually like with remakes i like them to like try to like keep keep stuff the same but change stuff that could be changed and i think that is definitely something that is okay to be changed so i'm interested to see where they take it um i'm glad that they're not like doesn't seem like they're going to be hitting it beat by beat like they did with um, Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. Um, I'm honestly amazed it took them this long to remake Child's Play. Really? Well, yeah, because they remade Halloween, remade Friday the 13th, remade A Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, what about all the Chucky movies that they've been doing? Well, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, yeah, Chucky was still alive and well. But it's, like, to me, those four, including Chucky, are, like, the main top dogs to me. Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and Chucky. Um, so that it took them this long the, to say, oh, you know, like, let's do a remake of Child's Play. Like, I honestly thought this would have come out like five years ago or something. So wow. I'm, I'm a little shocked that it's come out this late. But uh, I am very interested to see how this remake goes. Um, like I said, I'm really sad that Brad Dorf is not playing Chucky anymore and um, Don Mancini doesn't have a part in this um but i am interested to see what uh mgm can bring us so fair enough then our final sorry our final trailer that we got was towards the end of the super bowl wasn't it Mm -hmm. okay i didn't watch the game so i don't know i so i went to a family party to watch it yeah Worst Super Bowl of all time. Yeah, dude. that's what like, I've heard. I don't know football, but I knew that this game was boring. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, the best part were the commercials, and even the commercials were subpar to yeah. what they've been in the past. Like there, there were a couple like good hits. Other than that, no. Like they were kind of garbage. Dude, I was this. still at work when I saw on Facebook <gasps> the Avengers Endgame big game TV spot is here. I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I don't even have to turn into the game now. Tune into the game now. It's it's, it's already here, so yeah, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah, the game sucked. The trailers were just, eh. Endgame was really the only good one. 
Yeah, other than Captain Marvel, I love. Oh yeah, Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel and Endgame. Those were the best ones. Um, but our final one that we got was a teaser for Toy Story Four, and still, I am just like, eh. yeah. like this literally gives us nothing about the story. All it is is Bo Peep walking. So they're at a fair, carnival, whatever, um, and. Bo Peep walks up to Woody, and it was really cool seeing those two back together again. And she's like, oh, where's Buzz? And he's like, oh, Woody's like, oh, you know, he was supposed to meet us here. Um, and then move on to where Buzz is, like, strapped to, like, the back of, like, one of those carnival games where all the prizes are. And the two, uh, like, the two new characters, Keenan and Kel, is it who are voice? Key and Peel. Key and Peel, I'm sorry. Keenan and Kel, that's... So, sorry. Some, that's a completely different duo. I'm actually uh, going to reference value for that. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry key and peel uh their characters are like saying like antagonizing buzz of like you know like oh who oh, who are you thinking you're like the top dog around here and like uh wh- i forget which character it is but like it keeps like kicking him uh and finally uh buzz decides to close his foot in his helmet and yeah the the toy deserved it i mean yeah, completely deserved it. I loved um, what he was yelling while he was doing. What was he He's, yelling again? He was yelling to infinity in my foot. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then kicks him, and then he's just like, "I hear in space people hurt. <laughs> like people can't hear you scream." And then he gets his foot locked in, and he's like, "Scream!" <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, like, was there really a point? To like, since we haven't gotten like anything that talks about the story, and I'm really surprised that we really haven't gotten like a full trailer yet. I'm surprised that we haven't gotten like a synopsis or something, yeah, to, to kind of give us a an idea of where they're headed. This is just like Toy Story Four. The toys go to the carnival. Yeah, that's that's really all it is. Um, so I'm really hoping they release a first trailer that gives a glimpse into what the story is because so far I'm just not feeling it. With this fourth one. Yeah, sadly. Yeah. Um, um, So one out of four. Or one to four. So. Excitement. Number one. Avengers Endgame, of course. Agreed. Number two. Captain Marvel. Agreed. Number three. Child's Play. Same. <laughs> and number four. Toy Story 4. Yep. <laughs> Woo. I'd put Toy Story 4 at like number five if I could. Yeah, right? <laughs> And that, like, hurts me to say that I'm more excited for a Child's Play remake than Toy Story 4. Yeah. Kind of bums you out when you say it out loud, huh? Yeah. (laughs) It really does. It really does. All right. Shall we move into our main event of the evening? Let's do it. All right. It's time! Time for the main event. Let's play game. All right, so our main event of the evening will be our All Bros Breakdown of the Oscar-nominated The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, For those of you who do not know, this movie is nominated for Best Original Song at the Academy Awards. And Costume Design. Oh, it's for, oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, f- I totally forgot I was nom- for, nominated for both. So, um, did you uh, put this song so i know you put it as like the song that you want to win did you put it at all for like costume design that if you wanted it to win um i do not believe that i did okay not for let's see uh costume design no no yeah we didn't pick uh buster scruggs original song I actually did vote it for it for yeah. our original song. Yeah. Because I've been listening. I listened to that song a ton today. It's a really good song. It really is. It's catchy as hell. It, oh, it absolutely really is. Um, This was a super interesting movie. We actually, before we get it's like too into it, we actually have a new format that we're going to try out. So what we've been doing is doing our, uh, like a reading a synopsis. Um, d- talking about our favorite character, least favorite character, who we thought the most important character and least important character was, and then we just kind of talk about the movie the rest of the time. Um, now, what we're going to do 
uh, to kind of change it up a little bit. And I think it will make us a little bit more effective on how we review movies. Yes, I agree. Um, we have split the movie into different categories. So the first category that we are going to discuss and kind of grade is the story, uh, how the story works overall. Um, we're going to talk about the theme. If there was like an overarching, overarching theme, um, we're going to talk about that, how it fit and how well it fit. And then we're just going to grade it zero out of a hundred. Um, we're going to be grading the acting, the character development, the, how well the music fit, um, the effects, if it had any, um, practical or, um, computer generated <laughs> visual or practical there you go <laughs> I, c- I couldn't think of it either <laughs> so you're good um then we're going to be talking about how the costumes work and then talk about the like the, the genre specific stuff uh that goes into it and then at the end we have our little formula that we're going to use to come up with our final grade yeah and yeah should be fun yeah let's try it out on like two movies yeah just like quick practice ones we did one on unfriended and aquaman and they actually came to what our uh original grades were Hey, hey so yeah so first let's get into the story um so the story was really split into six different parts, kind of like chapters in a book. Yeah, which I did not expect because I did not see the synopsis, or I did not read the synopsis. I just jumped into the movie. Um, so, s- spoiler alert here, I did not know that Buster Scruggs dies in literally like the first ten minutes. So I'm like, okay, y- you kill the character who's in the main damn title? Damn, mm-hmm. okay. It really led into how the rest of the movie was going to be. The entire movie, each of the different chapters, because I'm just going to split it up by chapters. Um, each of the separate chapters really dived into death. Yes, they That did. was the, the overarching theme, yeah. I think, um, was talking about death. But each of the chapters were stories in themselves. None of them really related to the other, which is what I was expecting them to near the end. But none of them really tied in together at all. Yeah, none. None at all. Um, Which I feel worked. I'm kind of now thinking about it. I'm kind of glad they didn't. So. Yeah, I think it, it kind of didn't really undo what the, I feel the Coen brothers were going for. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, so let's just go into like the different chapters. So the first chapter was the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And it opens in an amazing way. Yes. Like, honestly, oh. you could have thrown these in any random order and it would have fit w- really well. Yeah. Um... But it opens up with Buster Scruggs, and he's riding in on his horse playing guitar, talk or singing about not being able to drink water, or not being able to, or like forgetting the taste of cool water. Yep, love that song. It's I've so been trying good. to learn the lyrics to that today. Really? Because I've seen karaoke like hard in my truck. I've been trying to learn that, and uh, when the Cowboys trade their spurs for wings, I've been trying to learn both of those songs. Oh, I love it. Um, but this was super good. It opened up really well. Yeah. Oh yeah. The shots at the beginning, just of like the landscape were amazing. Yeah. Like Like, this movie was beautifully filmed. Yeah. And the effects that they used in this were really well done too. Mm -hmm. They were like amazing. Yeah. Um, so the first chapter is kind of. I think it's meant to be like funny. 
Yeah. But, and then the humor just kind of gets less and less as you go on until the very end. And then the very end is just like really thought provoking. All of these these chapters are thought provoking. Yeah. Um. But it opens up with Buster Scruggs. He's like a narrator uh, to the story, talking about who he is and um and everything. He's a gambler, an outlaw, being hunted. Uh, talking about his many nicknames, and they're all talking about like his song, or, like how he sings. Yeah, wasn't um? Do you remember the name that um? Like what crime he was being charged for on his wanted um paper? Uh, because he's think like, it was well, that ain't true thing. at all, or something like that. Oh yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was just it was it wasn't the actual uh the charge that he was against. It was the adjective that they used. Oh yeah, that's what it was. I don't remember the adjective yeah. though. I'm really crappy at like remembering lines. Do I am too. But I do remember the story really well. And like individual parts that really stood out. Um but you kind of get like uh thrown into like what kind of character he is. He's like a, a quick he's like quick draw McGraw. Yeah, no kidding, dude. Like holy shit. Yeah. Like this guy can shoot. He goes to like a, an Indian bar, orders a whiskey. They tell, and because of how he's dressed, they tell him that he's not allowed to order whiskey. Well, no, he said. Well, so he says, "Oh no, that's outlawed here." And he's like, "Well, what are they drinking? Whiskey, because they're outlaws." And he's like, "Well then, uh, my clothes shouldn't fool you. You know, I am an outlaw." He's like, "No, no, you're not an outlaw." He just carries on from there. Then they go to attack him, and he just blasts them all. And it's, it's fantastic. It's pretty great. Yeah. It's, it's not like a level, like the shooting, like when they were getting hit by bullets, wasn't like a Quentin Tarantino level, uh, violence. No. It was just basic enough where it was like believable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he shoots up everyone. One dude, like is like crawling out and he's just like, Oh, this dude like is, has a will to live. And he like, he's like, I'll get the door for you, buddy <laughs> gets out and gets on his horse and rides away to the next big town where he goes to gamble. Some dude gets up and he runs into surly Joe. Another song that was yeah. just, Oh, but he's asked to, to drop his weapons off at the the door. But he's uh, like, he seems like he'd be law abiding. Yes, he does. And he, it seems throughout the whole thing that he's just, uh, what's the word? Under people don't take him too seriously because of how he looks. But he's like super capable. Mm hmm. And he ends up like kicking this dude's ass, freaking get him to shoot himself from a a table. Oh, that, that was insane! How many times does he make him shoot himself? Like four or five. Yeah. <laughs> and then he sings like an, a a freaking crazy song. Yeah. And he it's crazy because he he doesn't brag about it. No, he doesn't. It seems like he he does it because he has to. Yeah. But he doesn't brag about it until the very end, with the, with that the dude that takes him down, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, because this like this is something I thought about the entire day. I'm like, he seems like the type of person that like d wasn't super cocky until the end. Yeah, and then once he was cocky, he gets gunned down, and. So Surly Joe's the brother of some dude that challenges him to a a, a duel. duel. Yep. And he shoots the dude's fingers off. I can't remember. Does he call for a count or no? So he asks. He's okay. like, do you need a count? And he's like, no, I'm good. And he gets his finger blown off. Yep. The dude screams and gets all his other fingers blown off. He's just like, I don't know if uh, if this man can shoot with <laughs> 
Like I know that if you take away his shooting gun, it's going to take him a little longer to pull the draw, or pull the draw. But you don't want to take like any risk, so he shoots the rest of the dude's fingers off. And then he so goes for see, the yeah, other yeah, hand, yeah, and he's just him, like, like struggling. Like God forgot to put some quit in this boy. <laughs> um, then he gets a mirror because he only has one bullet left, and sh- shoots the guy down. Perfect headshot, wasn't it? Yep. No. Like, I loved that. I loved the way that it was done. Yeah, it was. Oh, I loved it so much. <laughs> and then he's getting ready to leave yep. and gets challenged again by this stranger. Yep. Uh, and then he gets asked if he needs a count. A count. He says, no, I'm good and gets blasted in the head. And just his reaction to where he's like, he takes off his hat, sees the bullet hole. And then, like, it just uh, points, uh, the camera pulls to the front of him, and he pulls out his mirror and looks. He's like, well, that ain't good. And, fall, and then falls over dead. Yep. Um, and then that's where you get the trading the yeah. spurs for And I thought that song. was really cool of how they did it to where um, his, bo- his uh, spirit is leaving his body. That looked really good. It looked damn good, yeah. dude. I loved like how you could see him floating off yeah. the entire time. Yeah, that was awesome. Like that effect was crazy. I'm glad that it wasn't like fast, like most m- most of that when it comes to that kind of stuff it usually is. I liked that it was mostly slow. I thought that worked for it worked in its advantage especially with the song. Yeah. I liked how in this like the entire thing that with the story, the story was centered around death mm-hmm. and how everyone dies and how it kind of relates with everyone, regardless of how much money you have, regardless of your status, everyone dies. Yeah. And it, it may be different how everyone dies and it may with bus in Buster Scruggs's case, it may just be your time to go outdrawn. Um, but like it was just it's really thought provoking it really is it really is and I liked how it gets from like the most ridiculous situation with Butcher Scruggs and moves to the end with the the carriage Mm -hmm. which we'll get to later the next chapter was the the bank robbery the one with James Franco yeah, they got a lot of big names in this, they too. They really did. Like, I saw Liam Neeson. At, oh, wait, no, sorry. I saw, like, James Franco. I'm like, what? He's in this? And then I see Liam Neeson. I'm like, well, damn, they got a star-studded cast in this movie. Yeah, no shit, dude. Um, This one was interesting. It, yeah, it really was. Because, um, so you see uh, James Franco's character. I don't remember his name. Do you? Uh, they didn't give him a name. They didn't. Okay, uh, so he's just bank robber. So uh, can I refer to him as James Franco though, or do you want me to refer yeah, to him as ahead. bank robber? Okay. So Franco walks up um to the bank, walks in, um, and he asks the teller, you know, have you ever been robbed before? And he's like, oh yeah, you know, a couple times. He's like going over like how, uh, basically he stopped every single robber that has ever come into his bank, um, and then. You'd think after you hear literally no bank robber has been successful that he would just, you know, walk out. But no, he attempts to rob the place. Um, and the um, the bank uh, the, the bank teller makes it look like he's going to get the money. But it turns out he breaking out the shotguns that are under the windows. Um, literally almost blows James Franco's head off. And his kneecaps. Yep, and his kneecaps. Um, and so uh, Franco uh, sees where he... Uh, left or what door he went out follows and then i think he doesn't he like go by um oh my gosh where did a well isn't doesn't he like go by so the way that i saw it he didn't follow the dude out that door he went back out the front oh yeah that's what yeah and was walking back to his horse but then gets shot at yeah he runs and hides behind the well and then the freaking crazy ass uh, got, like, bank teller and shit attached to him and everything. Yeah, freaking got like a pansy. I loved what he was yelling. He's like, "Ting!" Like getting shot at, and he's like, "Pan shot!" Yeah. 
and just like running, like charging this dude and knocks him the hell out. Yep. And when he wakes up, he is on his horse tied to a tree being ready to get hung. And then, like, uh, like I, can you, like this one was a little hard for me to wrap my head around. Yeah, what, like this one is a nut, like the one that I've been thinking about. This one moves just day. like so fast. Yeah, like extremely like, fast. How? Like, why would you still go and try to rob a bank after you've been told that story? Like, it's just insane. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Like, it's kind of like. He wanted to die, but yeah. he didn't want to like shoot himself. So he's like, "How could I like die?" But it was just kind of like he was wasn't trying to, too hard to get away. Yeah, because he. So after he's getting hung, the 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 party that's with him, they're trying to get him to give up his horse, but then they all get attacked by Indians. And but they don't attack the guy attached to the tree. Nope, they just leave him be. Yeah, like they scare his horse. Yeah, and then they leave him because the horse is eventually gonna follow all the the grass and weeds up until eventually he swings off. Which personally, I felt that rope was like super long. It yeah, it really was. I'm like seriously, you could jump off and just like hit the ground, dude. <laughs> um. Like, I don't know how the hell that worked, but he gets cut down by this dude that's, uh... I don't, I don't say he gets ranching. cut down, like the little... He gets shot down. Yeah, the guy comes charging at him, and all of a sudden his horse goes running, and he's, like, hanging. And, like, the guy's shouting out, hold still! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, like, how the hell do you expect that to happen? Um, But I think, like, he's probably hanging there for, like, what, like three four seconds yeah uh and then he gets shot off um and then him and the other guy are talking i forget what they're talking about do you remember um i think they were just talking or he, he was talking about wanting a sidekick oh yeah that's what it was um and then um basically would you call them uh what would you call the people that were like starting to chase after them uh Maybe the law, the law. Okay, um, so they start chasing after them, and instead, so the one guy books it. He starts booking it, but instead of booking it, James Franco just decides to stand there. Yep, just stand. dragged to the sheriff. Yep, and has like, or it's the judge. Oh yeah, gets dragged to the judge. The judge's like, "What do you do?" And then this dude just explaining everything. He's just like, "I caught him with this stolen herd, um, all this uh, blah 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 blah." And then the punishment is he's getting hung, and then he goes and gets hung. And the best part of this is when the guy to his left is crying, and James Franco is like, first time. (laughs) I laughed pretty hard at that. That was pretty funny. So since this is split into six different parts. Yeah. Yeah, how do we want to do this? Yeah. Um... Let me do some quick math here real quick. Okay. Because if we were to split this hundred into six, uh, that's a, around 17 points per. It's like 16.66666, whatever. Okay. So if we want to grade it on like a zero to... 17 for each chapter Mm -hmm. and then like our final scores at the end okay all right so with the first chapter the ballad of buster scruggs how what would you like what would you grade this story i literally had nothing wrong with the story so like i'd say 17 out of 17 i'd say the same thing too so we're giving that one a 17 this one I had a little bit of issue. Yeah, I did too. Because it was just, there was a lot of just blankness. Yeah. That just like got skipped over. I can agree. And a lot of stuff that you just can't really explain. Like why he would still rob the bank after being told, 
all the crazy shit that the bank teller did. Yeah, I, um, I agree. And just sitting there when he knows that he's with a stolen herd. So maybe that one I'd give. Mm, maybe a 14. 14. Yeah, I was thinking 14 or 15. So yeah, 14. Okay, then the uh, the third chapter was this. This was the uh, the Liam. prospector, or was that Liam Neeson? No, I think it's Liam Neeson. Okay, let me make sure though. So the next one was uh, Liam Neeson, and Liam Neeson was. Like, I don't know who was in charge. Like, I didn't gather who was in charge in the beginning. Like, I thought it was the uh, the actor. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. But then... But then most it, it turns the out ended, that it looked yeah. like it was Liam Neeson's yeah, it was character. Really Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's Liam Neeson's um, story. So, so, he kind of puts on, like, a... Uh, kind of a f- freak show? Side show? Yeah, kind basically. Of thing. Um, with this dude that doesn't have any arms or legs, but recites Shakespeare. Shakespeare, yeah. or well, he, that, well, it wasn't just Shakespeare. Yeah, he was, was doing the uh, the Gettysburg Address. Yep, he was basically giving a speech. Yeah, uh, sets it up, has a big old crowd, and he goes and gathers money. Well, but sometimes that, he has big old crowds. Sometimes, like only three so, people showed up. I actually didn't pay attention to this at first. I had to go through and watch it again. The crowds grow smaller. Like the, oh, yeah, the, shit, the they fame do. just dies. dies. Oh shit! Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So the the fame of the the armless speech teller starts off strong, and then it just less and less and less, and then he's. They never talk outside of him doing the speeches. Yeah. Nope. He. Well, they talk like the only other time that they kind of like they not really talk, but it's when uh, Liam Neeson basically has sex with a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Um, She's like, oh, do you want to buy your buddy some loving? And he's like, no, that's really it. Yeah. So in this, it it seemed more like a. um... Like, he was the owner. Like, he might as well have just been, like, a puppet. Yeah, basically. Like, he was dragged everywhere, Mm -hmm. but didn't get to really do anything else other than his performance. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he didn't really talk. And I'm pretty sure that the guy that did, the guy that played um, the speech maker, I'm just going to call him that. That works. Um... Was the guy that played Dudley? It was. I I looked. You did? Yep, yep it's him. Yeah, that was pretty so, cool. Yeah. That, that was awesome. a damn good effect. Yeah, that really was. That looked really good. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, the crowds start dying more, less, or less and less people start listening, or some people leave during the show, mm-hmm. and then less people start giving money until eventually... It's like that well's just run dry. Yeah. Because he goes through like that the final time that we see the speech and no one gives anything. Um, so while he's packing up, Liam Neeson's character sees a um, another sideshow going on and goes to check it out. And it's a chicken that can do math. And it had a, a ginormous crowd. Yeah. It was insane how big it was. So, and then we see, like, it cuts to, after, like, we see him do his thing. Cuts to um, Liam Neeson making a deal with the owner. He buys the chicken. Kind of buys the show. Yeah. And then he goes on his merry way. And the the speech makers in the back of his cab, and he they're riding and whatever. Then they stop on a bridge, 
And this is where I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Like I was just like, where's this gonna go? Like, what, is he what? just going? Like, is this dude just gonna be left in the dust? Yeah. Or what? Or what? Like when I, so because uh, so he walks over to where the stream is, looks over, he grabs a rock and throws it down into it. I'm just like, okay, please tell me this is not going where I think it's going. It went exactly yeah. where we thought it was going. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Liam Neeson turns. Starts walking back to the carriage, whatever. Um, and doesn't he smile at the guy? He does. Yeah. And then it just ends. Yeah. He just like. Actually, it doesn't end. Then it just continues to the, the inside of the carriage, riding on, and it's just the chicken. Uh, oh there. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, that is. Uh... Like, I don't. I didn't know what to gather from this. Like, it, it seemed like the their thing was more of a, like, near the beginning, it seemed like he was, like, taking care of this kid. Yeah, it did seem like that. And then near the end, it seemed, or like, when he was sleeping with the prostitute, it seemed like he was just, like, a, like I said, the puppet. Yeah. Just kind of chilling out in the room. Like, he was only brought along, so no one would kidnap him. And then near the end, it just seemed like a pure business decision like you're like oh this act isn't working throwing the old one out yeah and damn like i did not see that coming that caught me off guard <laughs> this one is actually one of my top favorite oh, of the chapters mine too and i can't decide which one was my like all-time favorite it's hard it, it is really, really is. hard like I think the one I liked the least was probably the one with James Franco. Really? But even like and that was like a really soft. They're all really good stories. They're damn good. Yeah. Um so what would you grade this one out of 17? I don't know. I really had like nothing wrong with this story, so probably like a 17. I'm going to give it a 17 as well. Okay. Um the next chapter was the one with the prospector. Yes. Um you see like a, an amazing freaking nature view. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. Balls. So beautiful. And this old prospector comes in on his donkey singing, scares all the animals off. Mhm. Mm goes to the stream and has like has a feeling that there are that there's gold around and the process of elimination was interesting to me it was um the way that he like multiple holes up the side of the stream marked where there was like nothing and then marked where there was like a couple more pieces more here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Like kind of built it out and then it came to a triangle until he eventually came to where he thought Mr. Pocket was the pocket of gold. Yeah. And I thought that was a really cool nickname that he was given that. that was yeah. Awesome. Like I really, f I felt for this dude. I did too. Like he was working hard. Yeah. For all this stuff. Eventually gets to find Mr. Pocket. Yep. And then it cuts to this dude just standing there. And I jumped. Like, nothing uh, yeah. happened. There was no noise, no nothing. I jumped when it did that cut. I was like, oh. <laughs> and he shoots the dude, sits down, sets up a cigarette, smokes it, thinking that the dude's dead, jumps down in the hole, and then the dude, the prospector, comes back to life and just, like, attacks him. Yeah, they have that. Uh, like, damn. Um, but... Trying to Where does he shoot him first? I forget. Do you remember? I think he shoots him in the head. Are you sure? Was yeah, he shoots him up the up the head, like up through the bottom of the the throat, oh. and then he like just starts sh unloading on the dude. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's what it was. He calls him a uh, what was it? Something skunk. I forget. 
gosh, we're the worst. I know we really are, dude. We are. Um. Yeah. So. I really liked this one because this one was a little easier for me to dissect. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's it's definitely like the more like easier to follow of the stories. Yeah, for sure. Um, like the whole f- the fact that this d- this prospector knows he's getting old, has a relationship with like nature and what he's working towards. Yeah, ha- b- makes a name for him, Mister Pocket. I also found it interesting. This is like one of the only ones that kind of ends in, in a happy way, because the but it guy, still ends in death. Yes, um, because the guy that shot him didn't hit any vital organs, so looks like he's gonna be fine. And he was able to get quite a bit of gold. Two so, sacks full. Yeah, two pretty. Yeah. Um, I thought it was crazy like he did all the work and then this punk ass skunk wants to come and basically reap the rewards of everything this dude worked for welcome to the old west my friend well this is like super pertinent today yeah that's true like with what maybe some families deal with that have businesses like the the dad or the grandfather lay down did all the hard work and then they just get too old to do it and then they just kind of hand it off to their son who doesn't have to to do anything just has to let it grow how it is it's a good analogy right same with this this prospector did all the work this dude wants to come and reap all the rewards but this dude's just like f that shit yeah (laughs) Like, I'm going to freaking reap the rewards from this. And he does. And he freaking destroys the dude that tries to take that from him. And I I love the message from that. I I did too. Like, this was a super basic story. But I think it it really worked in its favor. Yeah. I felt like this could, this one could have been a lot, like, I felt this one was interesting the entire way through. Even though, like, yeah, in retrospect, the story, if you were to just share it with someone, kind of boring. Yeah. But, but the way it was shot. Yeah, and especially the, um, I don't know who played him, but um, the guy who played the prospector, just, like, not only his, like, actual acting, but just, like, his movements really definitely added to the story. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I'm going to give this one a hard 17 as I am, well. I am too. Um, the next one, the second to last one, is, in my opinion, the most heartbreaking. It really is. And it's the longest one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the uh, story of Alice and Mr. Crip. I don't think it's Mr. Crip. I forget his name. Very good. I forgot too. Yes. Um, but this story kind of it's follows Nap. Mr. Nap. Yeah, Miss. Yeah, Mr. Nap. So this story follows this woman who is supposed to be traveling to Oregon with her brother. Brother. Yep. Her brother has a dog named President Pierce, which I that, don't understand. Uh, yeah, I was like. Oh, okay, that's quite a name for a dog, even back then. You could have cut the dog out. Yeah, but I mean, the dog was cute. The dog was super cute. Yeah. Um, Wasn't that a Jack Russell Terrier? I think so. Okay. I'm not well versed in dog. I'm not either. <laughs> so it follows Alice, is her name. Uh, she's traveling to Oregon with her brother, who is a businessman. Who sets up a business proposition with this man in Oregon? Um, also, s- supposedly sets up um, a marriage between Alice and his new business partner. But on the way to Oregon, he dies of something. He just has like, yeah, he was or, like, what was it? Cholera? I think so. 
he was like and like they i think they like pointed out how like this is the fast they've ever seen it taken take an effect because like he was fine one day and then the next he's just dead yeah so like it like fully hit him over during the night so yeah so he freaking dies um the wagon train leaders go and bury him and one of the wagon train leaders mr knapp kind of grows fond of alice um cut to you kind of get to or alice comes to mr knapp with her problems um apparently her brother promised four hundred dollars to the wagon boy which was an exorbitant amount yes he's just like that's like when they said like he needs or he wants 200 when we get to this fort and then the other 200 once he get we get to oregon Mr. Knapp's just like, that's half. <laughs> like, that is an ex- extravagant price. Um, Hell, I'd even take that nowadays. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> um, so they end up... He tries to come up with a solution to help her uh, keep the help of her of the boy, but also pay the boy when it comes time. Um... But it, so the best solution that he comes up with is that he wants to marry Alice because he's grown fond of her. Um, she, throughout this whole thing, is just kind of of a yes woman. Yeah, she really is. Like, she, I don't think she really wanted, like, she shared this with Mr. Knapp. She didn't know or think that the marriage was going to work out. She just, it was following her brother. Yeah. Being uh, the yes woman. She didn't, it didn't seem like she wanted to. They offered to take her dog and kill them or kill the dog. And he, she's just like, okay. Like she never made, said no to anyone. No. And this comes back to bite. Like this story was just destroyed my soul. Yeah. (laughs) The, I have to admit, like, um, well, wait, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that part of the story. Um, so, whoops, um, literally really after that, isn't it, um, uh, when, um, so Mr. Knapp, uh, tells his, um, friend, I don't remember his name, do you? Arthur. Arthur, thank you. Um, that, you know, he wants to, uh, ask Alice to marry him. Um, and so, ask, and... She kind of like doesn't say yes or no that night when he asked her, but the next morning she's like, you know what, I, I, I do actually want to marry you. Um, so as they're, uh, basically keep uh, the trail keeps moving. Um, Arthur, um, here I think he hears something, right? Doesn't he? Uh, or, or, or like they're like, where's Alice or something like that? Yeah, so Alice is always kind of like lagged behind. Yeah. Um, but he, Arthur is riding back, sees her wagon boy, asks where she is. And the wagon boy who has like the most punchable face on planet Earth. Right? Like, oh. Like, talk about like RBF. How about RDF? <laughs> resting dick face <laughs> that's a pretty good one Thank you. uh yeah has a major case of rdf <laughs> um says that she ran after she heard uh president pierce barking and ran after him uh on her horse and then arthur's just like oh shit runs after her finds her in a field um Checking out the prairie dogs. Yep. And she doesn't know what they are. But out in the distance, Arthur sees a lone Indian and goes to make the peace sign and everything and doesn't get responded to. And so the team of Indians come. And so he's like, we're, we're getting ready for a fight. And she's just like, what are you talking about? It's just one. And he's like, oh, yeah, check again. And it's like a 
whole mini army of yeah. them. Yeah, it was insane. He takes down the saddle to build like a kind of like a barrier yeah. to protect them. Hides behind a hill. Uh, gets his rifle ready and pulls out his pistol, gives it to Alice, and tells her what's going to happen. He says, they're going to come. We're going to fight them off. If things go or turn out like they're going to go for the worst, like, I'm going to shoot you, and then I'm going to shoot myself. And I was like, oh, shit. And then she's just like, what? And like freaking out. And she's, he's saying, like, what they're going to do to you or what they will do to you if they get you is a lot worse than being shot in the head. Yeah. Like, they're after they're done, like, ripping your clothes off, they're going to have their way with you, and then they're going to, like, skin you alive. And she's like, oh, shit. And he's like, so he hands her the pistol and says, if anything happens to me, like, this gun has two bullets in it and they're not for shooting indians you're gonna put it right here on your head and put it to her forehead and says and you're gonna like end it before they get you and she's just like like i said the okay woman well she kind of like she's kind of like pushing it off at first she's like no 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 i'm not gonna do that but finally she does take the gun yeah but like I said, yes, woman. Yeah. Even though she was pushing it away. So they're running. They get tripped down in the prairie holes, which is hilarious. Yeah. So they get, like, so the Indians are riding, fall down in the prairie hole. And I loved what he says. He's like, prairie hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just the way that he was able to base, like, fight off this whole group was awesome this was an awesome scene he arthur's a badass he oh i guess um when it comes to the west arthur's really know what they're doing damn right yeah red dead redemption 2 reference (laughs) for the win yeah um so yeah they they go they come they fall and then they take off yep uh then they start to come back and he battles them off again kills the leader and then they all go running off but then there's this one lone dude on a horse that comes and knocks him out with like a club or something knocks him to the ground the indian jumps off his horse walks over to him getting ready to freaking like scalp him and arthur blasts him in the head yeah he legit like actually doesn't he actually like just start cutting his forehead yep yeah he, like okay. he goes to and then he pulls it or okay. Arthur pulls the gun and yep. blasts his brains out perfect headshot and so that indian's dead he goes and kills the chief or who i'm assuming is the chief and they never really say but i'm assuming like that's the guy in charge um and then you, all you see is President Pierce barking on top of that little tiny hill. Yeah. He goes, like, Ar- Arthur goes, yeah, I was like, oh shit, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit. Like, she freaking got hurt. Like, yeah, that's oh, what I thought, rough. like, oh, like an Indian, like, sneak attack or something like that. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. But no, she has a single bullet to the head. Yeah. And Arthur's just like, ah, oh, damn it. Like, you didn't have to do that. Like, you just had to wait. But, like, I had a hard time feeling, like, super sad, because I'm like, good on you, Alice. Yeah. I'm like, you were freaking just ready. I but wish him luck, though, explaining that to Mr. Knapp. Well, th- that's the yeah, that's the, the best part of, yeah. like, the end. That's, yeah. like, what he said. He's like, he had no idea how he, what he was going to say to Mr. Knapp. Yeah. Which is what I loved, like, with the opening of the chapter, because it shows the picture, and then the under the title it says like something that's going to be in the story did you catch that i didn't catch that so if you go back and look at all the pictures at the beginning yeah underneath it has like a little sentence Uh that's in the end oh yeah or somewhere in the story okay all right i gotta go i gotta go back like the one with uh buster scruggs i think it was like um you looked at them you're playing them 
which is what Surly Joe oh, says. Oh, yeah. Him. Yep. Uh, the one with James Franco says, Pan shot. Yelled the, the bank teller. And. Huh. Yeah, so it goes through. And so it like, has a little thing that someone says in the story. And that would be. Like, how do you explain that to someone? Yeah, it's kind of hard to. Like, it was. Like, this one was just heartbreaking, dude. It really was. It really, really was. Like, I really felt for everyone. Like, I felt for Mr. Knapp not wanting to die alone or get old on the trail, moving people back and forth. Like, he still wants to be able to have kids that can take care of him when he gets older, and he feels like this is the age that he really needs to have them. Yeah, and he feels like she's the, the one. Yeah. And Arthur is that guy that just knows everything, knows all the heartache, knows everything that needs to happen on the trail. And Alice is just the yes woman that does everything she's told. Yep. To a fault. Yeah. <sighs> just so heartbreaking. Like, it really is. I I had to pause it <laughs> and take like a bathroom break because I was just like, oh, I need it. I need a second. Oh, this destroyed my soul. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I had some issues with this story. Yeah, not I'd, a ton. No, just some. So I think I'm gonna give this like a so 15, 16? I'm thinking fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, now the last one, and I think this one's my favorite. Really? Yeah. It's this carriage ride with these three, actually five strangers. Yep. Um, the two that are, well, there's three, um, like a Frenchman, um, a woman, and a fur trapper, and then there are two bounty hunters. Um, they talk about the guy that's dead on the roof, and they're traveling on this carriage. And they just kind of start talking about their relationship with people. Yeah, what what is it the bear trapper refers people to as ferrets, isn't it? Yeah. People are ferrets? Yeah, okay. people are ferrets. And the woman is fighting hard against this thing. Yeah. People are not like ferrets. Yeah. They're the the righteous and the sinful. But with the ferret guy, I forget his comparison. Yeah, I forgot too. Like the dead and the alive. This is like one I definitely need to watch again. Um, because I feel there's so much to take in with this story. There was so much to take in, dude. Like I loved the when the woman was talking about living with her daughter, the Frenchman was saying, like, oh, that like why would you inconvenience your child like that? And she got, like, super offended. Yeah. But he's just like, your kids need to go on their own path. They need to follow their own way. Which is something that I, I feel down in my soul. Because I feel I've had a really hard time going my own route. Following my own path. Yes. Without a lot of um, backlash. Yeah, you've received quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's like pretty damn. much how I got married. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm i not saying anything bad about being married. I love being married. Right. It's just, I would have preferred the route that we went on to get there to be a little different. I understand. But circumstances didn't allow that. And I feel like that was what the Frenchman was saying. That the these children couldn't go and go their own route because their mother was there. Yeah. But now that they're gone, they can follow their own path. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, I also loved how he was talking about truly knowing a man with the gambling. Where he was in a, a poker match. And one of his friends was leaving the match to go 
do something else. And he's like, I want you to make the bet for me. But he's like, I d- did not know the man that well. I did not know him in that way. Everyone handles things different, but you're never going to know how they're going to handle it. And like, you could make mistakes that they would like, are going to hate you for or whatever. And I don't know how true I think that is. Like, I feel like with us, I think we know, I know you better than most people. And you know me better than most people. I think the only person that might, and this is a, a strong might, or like a soft might, that might know me better is Brielle. Yeah. Like, but you get me. Yeah, I do. But do you, would you feel comfortable making a bet with my money? And like be confident in knowing that that's the bet that I would make. And honestly, like depends on the situation, especially like what is being bet on. Um, Because if it's like something I literally know nothing about and say, you know, like, Literally, they're everything that there is to. No, I would not. Because knowing my luck, I would choose the wrong option. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of something that, like, we both know fairly well. Like, maybe, like, like, let's, let's, because this is a movie review, let's talk movies. If we were to bet, or if we were to be in a game where the entire goal is like poker, Mm -hmm. but instead of betting on cards, you're betting on movies. And whatever movie you have in your hand, whatever the Rotten Tomato score or whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever the, whoever has the highest Rotten Tomato score wins. So kind of like that. Okay. And, like, like, would you be, like, do you think that you would be able to make, a dis- like, a bet that would accurately depict what I would pick for myself? When it comes to that, yes. I definitely think so. Hmm. I think I'd be able to if it was, like, something like that. Yeah. But there are ways... Like, there are ways that I feel no one else can know you other than yourself. I there are what, like, there are what things that my mom knows about me that Brielle never will. Not oh. like, not like no, I, information, I, no, but just like, it's like, let's hope she didn't hear that. In the like, next maybe, room. like, maybe, uh, my mom will notice something about my demeanor that brielle just can't pick up i i get you and then there's stuff about my demeanor that brielle can pick up that my mom just doesn't and then like same like vice versa with like you between my mom like i think there are things that you could pick up that my mom couldn't about me or that things that you could pick up that brielle couldn't yeah Like, but there's only, like, I think there are, like, different ways of knowing people, like this guy said. But there's no way of knowing a person. In, like, kind of inside and out. Yeah. Like, I think regardless of how much information we have on each other, there's always going to be something that the other person would do that would surprise us. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because that's just the human condition. Yep. And if you can't tell, I freaking analyze this one too. Shit. Yeah, dude, like, this has got me, like, really thinking, holy shit. <laughs> like, damn. Um, I liked how the, the two bounty hunters, when they were asked what their job is. That was cool, them going into detail. That was talking real, about. Yeah being reapers harvesters of souls and 
So, because I, so I'm trying to remember the line because it was such a bad A line. Um, because the the lady, because he says he's like talking about it, and then the lady says like, "Well, um, what she say? Um, well, what does that like mean to you or something?" He's like, "Well, how should I know? I'm just the." What does he say? He's just like the watcher or something like that. Is it, is it, the spectator. I think maybe it's that. I can't remember like the. I gotta like go back and like listen to that line again because it. It was a pretty bad A line. I'm like, oh. yeah. It... Dude, the lighting in this scene. Oh, dude. Did it, like, did it change subtly or did it just like, like change? I don't because know. I didn't notice it until yeah, I, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I didn't either because you're so focused on these characters. So yeah, I have no idea. I'm gonna have to go back and just like try my hardest <laughs> to not pay attention to the characters, and just pay attention to the background. Because oh, that was be insane. Because it was like really light, and then it like I was listening to their stories, and yeah. then just suddenly dark. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, what? Oh, um, we do a time time jump over here. I loved the. I'm gonna call them the Reapers now. Okay, yeah, it works. I loved their line about how they like to watch how people come to terms with what's happening. And I I love that you kind of get the feeling that it's like he's talking about his last bounty. Mm-hmm. But it, it could be talking about them. They don't know how, like, they're trying to deal with the fact that they're dead. Because I think they're dead. Yeah, I think so too. Because, I mean, the only like the only dead person in this was the the bounty yeah or whoever the bounty hunters f- found but i think that what we saw was these three people coming to terms with death which is just a crazy thought it is and especially the final shot of it how like walking into the hotel yeah and like the guy kind of looks isn't he like really like skittish a little bit so all three of them are okay they're all like fairly skittish that none of them want to get out of the carriage none of them want to complete that journey then they all get out and then they're all really hesitant about walking into the hotel and then the carriage rider takes off takes off and then the Frenchman's the last one to walk in because, like, I think, that, like, the final scene is them just accepting their fate. Yeah. And I love that. I do, too. Now, really, like, diving into really where the story really, really went. It's, damn, it's really thought-provoking. I wish that I could... I want to gather, like, the audio for just this sequence or for this chapter just to listen to it over and over again because there's so much like philosophical questions that come up from there like i almost just because i couldn't find it i was uh i was wanting to grab my notebook and just start taking down notes which i think i'm going to after i watch this again but it's so thought-provoking this one i have to give a a hard i I do too dude there's been like some uh like quotes that like I've um I don't know about you but like in many movies there's like a quote that like always stick out sticks out to me I'm just like you know I don't care what it takes I'm gonna memorize that shit so I can literally just repeat it off the top of my head like that there's like so many movie quotes that I've done that for uh like a recent one was um I know you haven't seen it yet we're watching it very soon is uh the new Halloween um and it's when um. They're uh, the two um, journalists are listening to um, old audio tapes, and one of them is um, of Doctor Loomis a couple months after uh, the events of Halloween in 1978, and he's um, explaining what he thinks needs to what he thinks needs to happen to Michael. Um, just how you know um, he thinks he needs to be basically um, given a shot to where he's unresponsive. 
and um, literally slowly all of his um, organs die and Dr. Loomis will be there to just to make sure that uh, his last, last breath is taken and then incinerate the body immediately. Um, and I have like that whole basic, what is, um, what is the word? Like a monologue? Yeah, I have that whole monologue memorized. That's awesome. Because I love it so much. Yeah, I think there's a lot of mo- like the front of the monologue in this mm-hmm. from that specific chapter yes. that I wanted to memorize. Yeah, me too. I, I gotta go watch this movie again. Yeah. S- p- p- the, 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 specifically that story. That one, and I definitely want to watch um, the Buster Scruggs one again. Same. Absolute same, dude. Um. Okay, so our final score from 0 to 100 for our story is a 97. It's not which bad. It's not bad at all. I can deal with, yeah. Yeah, I can too. Um. Okay, our next one, or our next category is theme. Uh, so I think we decided the theme was death. Yeah. Um, I feel it's handled quite well. It is handled really, really well. And I don't think there was any death that was like unnecessary or no, just felt out of place. Mm-mm, not at all. Um, I mean, yeah, like the Buster Scruggs one is kind of like it's not played up for laughs, but it's kind of like a laughs. It, but it's kind of like a dark comedy right. one, but it still works very well. It's it's justified in a way. Yeah. Um, so I'd give the, the theme of death, maybe, maybe because there were some, eh, yeah. maybe a 90. Yeah, I'd say about that. Okay, the acting, the acting in this was, was pretty top yeah, notch. Yeah, it really was. I can't really think of like, even if it was like B-list actors uh, that were just there in the background, none of them were bad. Like literally all of, every single person that had a speaking part in this movie was really good. Yeah, they were damn good. So, so uh, like 95? I'd say 95. Character development. I feel there was a, quite a bit there was um for buster scruggs i feel you kind of get to see him being top of his game Mm -hmm. to being the guy that gets beat yeah like the uh like the song says at the beginning there's a faster gun Uh and it's just somewhere around the corner Mm -hmm. like you never know when it's coming but it's coming and even in um, Liam Neeson's one, where it's basically all silent, you can still see a lot of character development in it as well. Mm-hmm. So this one was a little harder because you, you kind of see him taking care of his prize uh, or the his money maker. Yeah. To realizing that his, it's not making him the money that he needs, so he goes and gets a new one, and then he just has to clean house and get rid of the new one or the the old one. Yeah. Just oh, so sad. So sad. Yeah, but you gotta get to see the characters and all of these kind of keep the same. Alice stayed the same, I feel. Yes, yeah, she didn't really develop too much. No. She was just the yes woman yeah. the entire time. So maybe I'd I'd dock some points for there. Yeah. Um, not saying that her story was bad or anything. No, but like her character really, there really wasn't a lot for her character. There wasn't really a lot of places for her character to go. Yeah. Um, I feel the best development was for the three in the carriage. Absolutely. That would agree. Like, oh. So I'd probably give this a 90. 90, yeah. I can't agree with that. Music. 100 yeah like no question none of the music fell out of place nope. Perfect. it all felt just oh um with the effects there were some damn good yeah. ones yeah like all the gunshots in the head wherever looked fantastic there was a lot of practical effects and it was very very i was very i cannot i cannot talk to me i was very pleased with how well they looked um, so I'd give it a hundred on this one as well. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. 
All right, costumes. 100. You think they all fit really well? Yeah, I don't really think I had a problem. I'm trying well, to think of any that that didn't fit, but all of them were really good. Yeah. I think the only one that felt a little out of place was Buster Scruggs and yeah. maybe the uh, the Stranger. Yeah, but that's really it. So, so I'd like say maybe, maybe a 95. 95, 95 yeah, yeah. yeah, dock it a little bit. Okay, so the genre that we kind of decided that this will fit into is uh, Western, uh, like a dark comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, Very thought-provoking. Yes. So as a Western, you haven't watched a lot of Westerns, have you? I've, I've watched, I mean, actually I have seen quite a bit because my dad um, absolutely loves Westerns. Um, so I John Wayne fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a huge John Wayne fan. So I saw quite a bit growing up. I did too. Um, so I'm a, I'm a I'm a fairly big fan of of westerns as well. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'd give this a maybe a ninety. Yeah, I can maybe know. maybe a ninety five because yeah. a lot of the themes could fit any time period. Yes, really good. Like you'd have to change some of them up a little bit, but other yeah, than that, but overall, like, really can go wherever you'd want them to. Yeah. Okay, so our final grade came to a ninety-five percent, which we have decided is an A. So this is a um kind of a softer A. Yeah. I think so that's what it got to an on. A minus. Yeah, I'd say about that. I think that's about what the score it got on Rotten Tomatoes. Around ninety five. Yeah, I think so. If it wants to load for me. Oh, ninety two. Ninety two. Yeah. So yeah. So, so we're not a- too far off. Yeah. The audience score was seventy seven. That's a little low. Yeah. That's way low. Especially for. Like this is a movie that I f- I f- can see myself watching over and over again. Oh, me too, and especially because um, like I told Caleb, I think it was like a quarter of the way through. Um, I kind of like got like a sense of like, okay, this kind of remind me of like the style of a director that I've seen quite a bit of movies from. Um, and I looked up and <laughs> when I saw the Coen Brothers, I'm like, yep, okay, yeah, it's got them stamped all over it. So, and I love that made me love the movie even more. So, yeah. So that concludes uh, this breakdown. I actually really like this format. I do too. I think this is a lot better. Yeah. So other than us just coming up with our own personal grade, it yeah. kind of eliminates all the uh, the personal stuff out of it. We yeah. kind of get a grade the the story kind of as a whole for us, and it gets us to analyze all these different aspects of it. Um, but yeah, so our final grade for this movie is going to be, uh, an, an A, uh, 95%, which is a little closer to A minus, but, uh, not too far off. Yeah. Um, but I think that concludes this episode. Yeah. Unless you have anything else you want to say on the movie? Nope. Okay. Um, well. Um, if you like this episode and want to listen to more breakdowns or dreamcasts or whatever, um, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Radio Public, and Spotify. Uh, you can also check all of our content out on YouTube. Uh, new videos will be heading your way soon, maybe, Rose? Yeah, let's go with maybe. It's a soft maybe. Yeah. <laughs> got to get a lot more footage. We got a decent amount yeah, today. Yeah, we did. We did. Like, I think you can get a decent amount out of what we made today. Yeah, I just want to get a little more. A little more? Mm. Serious? Oh, I mean, I can try to put a video. We put too. all the BS shit in our... That's true. Okay, I can see what I can do. <laughs> okay. Um, You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash theallbros. Or on Twitter, at the All Bros. No punctuation in there. 
Um, we're not super great about posting, but I, I'm you I'm are going not. To, super I know, good. I know, I know, I know, no. <laughs> I'm going to try and get better. I'm going to try and like do more polls, more stuff, like just to get more interaction. Um, but speaking of interaction, if you want to send us a movie that we should see, oh bloody hell! If you want to send us a, a movie that we should see or comment on this week's episode. Uh, let us know what you thought of Buster Scruggs if you saw it. If not, we're sorry we spoiled it. Yeah, sorry. But you knew what you were signing up for. You really watch it. It's on Netflix. so yeah. Easy to watch. It's a, it's damn easy to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you want to do that, you can email us at channel at gmail.com. Or you can fill out our form on our website, which is tinyurl.com. Slash the All Bros again, no punctuation in that at all. It's just T H E A L L B R O S. Um, and we hope to hear from you guys soon. Uh, not sure what we're going to do next week. Should we do a review of Bohemian Rhapsody since you've seen it? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so next week we'll be doing a breakdown of Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh. I've already seen it. I think it's an amazing movie. It really is. I can't wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. Yeah. It comes out next week on Blu-ray, so bam. Yeah, Bronson already got it on digital. Well, he sucks, okay? He's well, killing... send it to me anyway, just in case he wants to deactivate I his Amazon. I will. Don't worry. Okay, well, until next week, this has been the All All's Bro. The All's Bros. The All's Bros. Guess we're changing up the name now. The, the All Bros. <laughs> podcast i'm caleb and i'm jonathan and we'll catch you guys next week deuces bye what's up with the voice every week dude i don't know i like it it works it fits me get over it